Okay, so here are the targets one and two homework. Um, so targets one and two were the kind of introductory targets to this new unit six over rational functions. Um, target one was just identifying whether a function is rational by looking at the graphs and equations, and then target two was finding the constant of variation for inverse variation. So let's do target one first. It says, circle which the following represent a rational function. Well, we know the characteristics of rational functions are that it has to be in that distinctive um, fractional form. So we have to have like a numerator and a denominator, but also we have to have x in the denominator. That's one of the things we have to have. Now with a, a is a rational function. It does represent one. We don't have x in the numerator, but that's okay. We only have to have it in the denominator. So we do have x minus 6, which is linear, in the denominator. So that is good. Now b is not a rational function, unfortunately. It does look like a fraction, but technically what that is saying is that's saying one-third x. So x is not in the denominator. We don't have an x in the denominator. Um, C is a rational function. It's a really good example of when we have a, a linear um, equation on the top, and then we have a quadratic in the on the bottom in the denominator. Um, for D, D is not a rational function. We do not have X in the denominator in any of those fractions. And then for 2, it's saying circle the following that represent rationals. Um, if you remember, we have to have that distinctive two-part graph. Um, and then we have to have those asymptotes, the horizontal and vertical asymptotes. Now, A is, does not represent one, neither does B. But C, if you look at C, we do have that distinctive two-part graph, and we have that as well in D. So I'm going to kind of go over this in black so we can see exactly where these are. And then if you notice, we do have those um, asymptotes that kind of horizontal and vertically cross the graph that our graph does not actually touch. Gets super close forever and ever, but doesn't really touch. All right, target two was finding the constant of variation for inverse variation, given x and y values. And we're going to do this, you know, given a graph or an equation or a point or a table. We can do it really given anything. So the first one, we're given a graph. And my first step is just going to be to just grab a point from that graph, any point. I'm going to grab that point 2, comma 2. It's the easiest for me to see. So 2, comma 2 represents an x and a y. And if you remember, we're going to use that um, uh, function or equation y equals k over x to get that constant of variation. We're going to be plugging in x and y values and solving for k here. So if I do that, I have 2 goes in for y, and then k over 2. To get rid of that fraction, I have to multiply both sides by my denominator, and then I get k equals 4. Now for b, b is actually already in the form y equals k over x. So I can just say that my k is 4. Easy enough. For c, they give me an x and a y coordinate. So I'm going to plug that into my k equals, I'm sorry, y equals k over x. So I'm going to say that 12 equals k over negative 8. Now, to get that k by itself, I have to multiply by my denominator. And you might need your calculator for this one, but k equals negative 96. Big number. Moving on to d, I'm going to grab one of those points. Um... I like the ones right in the middle, so I'm going to do negative 2, comma, 2. That represents an x and a y. I'm plugging that in for y. Oops. Well, that looked weird. y equals k over x. So let's see. 2 equals k over negative 2. And then I'll multiply both sides by negative 2 to get k by itself. And I get negative 4. And then for e, I have x comma y, plugging that in for y equals k over x, 12 equals k over 4. Another way you can think of this is what divided by 4 gives me 12? So you can either think about it that way, or we can just do the traditional route of multiplying both sides by 4, 
that'll give us the correct answer every time. But thinking what divides um, by 4 to get 12 is a, another cool way of thinking of it. So we get 48 here. And then F, if you remember from the notes, I said that when we're given a table like this of X and Y values, they're actually just giving us coordinate points. So I can just grab one of those and use it just like I've been doing um, to plug in for Y equals K over X. I'm going to grab the middle one and I'm going to say that 3, I'm sorry, 1 uh -huh, equals K over 3 and then multiply by 3 on both sides to get K by itself and I get K equals 3. So pretty good homework assignment, pretty short. Um, goes right along with the notes. Um, and yeah, that's the beginning of Unit 6.